what's up, creepers and geekers? Chris the Atari Creep here, and happy 2017. And I figured, you know what? My first video of the year, I do something I don't normally do. I'm going to give a quick little review of this thing. Again, reviews aren't my, my deal. I don't feel that I'm good at them. But I did want to spotlight this um, somewhat briefly, only because I was really excited when I heard about this. I didn't choose to get the deluxe package that looked like it was an Atari cartridge box and all that stuff. Um, I'm more than happy with this. And I was able to get it for Christmas. And I haven't been able to put it down since. Now, when I originally heard about the book, I didn't really look into it. I just knew it existed. And that's just how I work. I, I want to be surprised when I flip through something like this. I honestly thought it was going to be literally just artwork. And maybe a brief little thing about it. But there's a whole lot more to this book than just looking at pictures and a quick description. I mean, there's uh, it's a little bit of everything for the Atari enthusiast in here. Obviously, they do talk about the artwork, which is great because, you know, if you, if you refer back to my Atari 101 video talking about collecting cartridges, one of the things I noted in there that I love the most about it is the artwork. And I refer to this type as the watercolor. Now, I don't know if they used watercolors or acrylics or whatever, but it just looks very watercolory to me. But either way... Um, but that is one of my favorite things on top of, of course, playing the games. And the reason being is, is they're just so unrealistic. But it aided in that whole imagination thing. You really needed a lot of imagination to play Atari. Let's face it, the graphics weren't the greatest. It was the early days. It was the golden era. And it was a bunch of squares doing a bunch of other little things. And, of course, it got better as time went on. But long story short, the artwork is what helped us out. And there's a lot of great examples in here of the artwork um, but there was a lot more to this book than just talking about that so now without getting into the entire book i'm not going to sit here and try to show you the whole book for a couple of reasons one i want to encourage you to get it two you know this is somebody's work and i don't want to infringe on copyrights or <clears throat> make it so someone says all right well i've seen enough i don't need to get that book um if atari is your thing and you're really into the history of all this stuff um First and foremost, go ahead and go get this book. This is amazing. But let's flip through it real quick, and I'll just show you a few things. And, uh, you know, I'll give you my closing thoughts. Well, first and foremost, it looks like it was, they gave Pac-Man a pimple. And that might have been a uh, dimple, but no, it's clearly a pimple. It's got red marks. That's I just noticed that now. Sorry. But here's our table of contents. And this is, uh, you know, I'm just showing this real quick to show you that it's more than just pictures of the artwork. Um you know, of course, we got a forward and introduction. They do brief on the history of Atari. Then they talk about art and design by itself. Um, they highlight specific artists from the time period of Atari. Um, they also talk about coin-op days and home consoles. And they have a lot of really great visuals of concepts for consoles that we grew up with and cherished. Some that never happened. Same with games. Um, they briefly touch on the uh, Alamogordo landfill dig. Um, of course, they're titling an E.T. on Earthing a Mystery, but you know how that went down. Um, they talk about Pac-Man briefly, of course, a bunch of artists, and just just a whole bunch of stuff, more than just looking at pictures of the artwork on the boxes. Now, I did briefly go through this and looked at all the pictures, and now I'm actually reading it. And if you can see, I haven't really gotten that far yet because um, it's pretty engrossing, and I'm making sure I read it and understand it, and um, I'll probably read this three or four times, but... I haven't been able to put it down since I got it in Christmas. So let's just uh, let's just flip through it. Uh, again, nothing crazy. Um, let's see. History of Atari itself. They talk about Pong and you know, their first cabinet, which I think this thing is sexy as hell. Um, it's too bad this game never took off. Um, there aren't enough cabinets out there for us to cannibalize and use. I would love to have that cabinet just to put a meme in it. That would be the perfect meme. Um, or meme, however you want to say it. Steve Jobs. He worked at Atari. I knew that before this book, but... Now, you know if you didn't. Um, they talk about just designing art itself. A couple of people who work for Atari. Let's, uh, I'll flip through it backwards. It's probably easier from this angle. Um, let's see. Uh, consoles that we never got. Different designs for joysticks and stuff. The Mind Link. That's an interesting concept. Uh, here's a console that never came out. I would love to have this. Even if I just made my head someone mock up, you know, what it is and put the game in there. That would be awesome. Um, the joysticks were going to be a little bit different, but eventually we got the 2600 joysticks as a result of that. Um, artwork on the joysticks we grew up with and love. 
This is one of my favorite pages. 2600 or the VCS concept art. Um, I think that looks amazing. I would love to maybe reproduce that somehow, but I don't know how that would work. I uh, will figure it out. And of course, we get into actual game artwork. Book's very colorful. Um, shows, you know, office memos. There's really nothing more I need to touch on. I mean, uh, let's see if I can find. There's a specific picture that I have in mind I want to show you. Um, oh, this is amazing. They talk about the sword quest. Um, I won't get into what they, you know, they talk about, but you'll have to read it on your own. But there's some concept art in it, like for games that never came out, but the artwork still exists. Um, let's see. Without getting too boring. Well, if I come on it, I'll get on it. But the point I was going to try to make with that specific image was, you know, it really did aid in the, um, the imagination of the whole thing. And I honestly think that's better than modern gaming, you know, when everything's so visually um, there for you. You know, there's no imagination to it. You just play and, yeah, you may have a good time. This is what I was talking about. My favorite cabinet of all time, Centipede. That really helps. I mean, come on. Let's face it. The 2600 copy of Centipede was a bunch of squares that you shot at with another square and all kinds of stuff. But seeing stuff like this really did aid in that whole, I can't imagination. And here's one of my favorites of all time. Missile Command. How can you not? How can you not love that? It's kind of a bummer that the chick's not in there, but but that's the book. Let me just show you the back of it real quick. Like I said, it re retails for forty bucks. You could probably get it for a little cheaper than that if you have a coupon or you're a member of some book club or whatever. Um, I didn't opt for the big super duper package because I'm going to get the same information in this. Um, but yeah, I say it's worth getting it, and uh, I was excited to see this come out. I heard about the same time that Pat the NES Punk's Nintendo book came out, and I'm glad something for Atari is coming out because I don't feel Atari gets enough spotlight. So, guys, I hope this review wasn't too boring. Again, I don't do reviews for a specific reason because a lot of times I don't know what to say or how to say it. But that's that. That's The Art of Atari by Tim Lepento. But Patino? I don't know. You say it however you want to say it. And, um, yeah, that's it. So, guys, again, happy 2017. Hope everyone's New Year is amazing. I hope you had a blast on New Year's Eve, but you were safe and you made it home okay. And until next time, guys, take care and bye-bye.